give him the decision. Yeah, the re well, the referee, How does he justify that? The, the referee had in indicated once, well, he'd, he'd, he'd given the warning, and the warning was waved away. And then he indicated to his colleagues later on that he wanted to give a, a warning, and they, and they nodded no. So he, he, he didn't even attempt to give it the second time. But that contest, um, in, in the golden score, in the two minutes, um, re revolved around attempts by the Slovenian to either um, hold his opponent or choke his opponent. He was on top all the time. That's right. Now, as a result of the Lithuanian coming under con uh, consistent pressure, the referee wanted to give him uh, a penalty, which we laughed at because there was no chance for the Lithuanian to do anything because he was defending all the time. So it couldn't have been the case where he would have had an opportunity to attack. He couldn't have attacked. The Lithuanian could not have attacked. So how he could end up winning the contest is beyond me. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't in a position to attack. And when he, when he came to his feet from having the pressure on the ground, he did nothing. Because the Slovenian was doing the Makikomi. I, I told you that I'd only got one wrong and I was so confident that I was going to get that one right there should have been three white flags it ended up with two blue and one white now we know there was something wrong because there was a disagreement between the uh, one of the corner judges the referee and the other corner judges because one of them gave a white so we know there was something not right but I can't believe that the referee gave it blue after he, yeah. he tried to wind up blue mm, yeah after he'd spent the period in Niwaza yeah. when he couldn't have attacked <laughs> <laughs> and as you said Denzine what was unfortunate was that a, a plastic water bottle was thrown on and we don't want to see that and there is it's unforgivable that kind of behavior is unforgivable Well, during the time that we've been discussing the um, contest between the Lithuanian and the Slovenian, uh, Nikola Jeremic of Serbia and uh, Alexander Nitek of Poland have taken to the, to the mat. Half the contest has gone and there's no score. I'm just going to check with our IT head to find out whether or not we've recorded uh, that contest luckily we, we haven't which means we won't have to go and see it again but somebody else has be interested to see what um, be interested to see it again anyway we move on And you were the one that wanted to move from the rather sedate surroundings of under 81 kilos to the controversial plus 90 kilos. That you must have seen move. that coming. <laughs> that was a good move. I might just try and catch the attention of the IGF referee director, Jan Schneiders, and get his opinion on... Uh, he might be reluctant to give an opinion. Well, we, we but, don't um, have to put him on the spot by interviewing. We can do that on the side. But my feeling is he didn't see it. He wasn't watching that particular contest. Just going to ask. Ask. You ask. <laughs> We've got nothing against Sinyauskas, by the way. We're delighted that he's in the uh, semi-final. We're just um, interested to see what the opinion is on, on the refereeing director. How it is that these referees could have found their way to put the Lithuanian into the semi-final anyway. The 
first of the quarterfinal matches in Pool C, Nikola Jeremek of Serbia and Alexander Nitek of Poland. And there's the Yapon, they give that to the Serbian. Into the last minute. And the Serbian takes it. Well, the Polish player Nitek will have to work his way through the repechage. Just only two contests, not the long drawn out affair that it used to be. Nikola Jeremic into the semi-final. 